thanks, dear viewers, for staying with us in this special broadcast consecrated to the speech of the President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Beer, to the nation. The President of the Republic, in his speech, highlighted socio-economic, political, and security achievements and challenges of the Republic in the course of 2019. And the President of the Republic indicated that the economy of the country is growing and that Cameroon has to become an emergent nation by 2035. He indicated that there is need to double efforts to uh, step up the economic growth of the country and also to improve the living conditions of uh, Cameroonians and the President of the Republic talking about the 2018 presidential election uh, violence or con protests that erupted after the February or rather October 7, 2018 presidential election, the President of the Republic indicated that when an election is conducted respecting democratic norms, the results should be accepted. And he said no media can change the result of an election. And he indicated that with regards to the upcoming municipal and legislative elections of February 9, 2020, all measures have been, in take, have been taken to ensure that all Cameroonians take part in, that, uh, in those elections. And if need be, the security measures will be uh, stepped up, notably in the Anglophone regions of the country, hit by socio-political and security crisis for close to three years today. And concerning the crisis, the President of the Republic of Cameroon indicated that a number of measures and actions have been taken with the major national dialogue, the special status, and the law that has been promulgated by himself with regards to the two Anglophone regions of the country. And he said that those who will persist on the wrong route, referring to those who are fighting for the restoration of the independence of the former Southern Cameroons. There will be no option uh, left but to fight them, notably with the use of security and uh, armed forces. And he indicated also that uh, there is uh, there are efforts that have been made to fast track the promotion of bilingualism and multiculturalism in the Republic of uh, Cameroon. And we are receiving some civil society leaders to analyze this uh, end of year address of the nation of the President of the Republic, Paul Beer. To my right, Dimancho Michael, member of the Civil Society, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Babila. It's a pleasure. And to my left, we have uh, <coughs> Tabon Carl. He's also a member of the Civil Society. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Babila. I begin with you, Dimancho Michael. When you listen to the President of the uh, Republic, what you take on all what he, he has said with regards to the economy of the country, with regards to socio-political and security challenges that are hitting Cameroon from the north to the south, from the east to the west today. Without talking much about the issue of progress, which the president mentions about three times, I would like to very much delve on what is our main concern in this country for now, which is the Anglophone issue. And of course, you realize that our president is still trying to pull ropes with what is going on. Uh, with Corpses littered all around the places, and we thought that we are going to have a president who is very, very remorseful, a president who has a people at heart. But uh, unfortunately, I listened to a president who seems to be very, very and actually absent in the day-to-day uh, -day events of his country. Because we would have thought that maybe the president would have given a balance sheet of the three years' war and to be able to address it squarely as the president of a country who has taken an oath of office to be able to safeguard and to take care of the lives of the people. The lives of the English people are in the hands of the president because whether they voted for him or not, he is the president of the Republic of Cameroon and each and everybody is supposed to be under his safety and under the security but of the But the head of state of highlighted a number of actions and measures that have been taken this far to solve the Anglophone crisis with the intention of restoring peace and normalcy in those two regions, notably with the major national dialogue and, of course, some of the uh, resolutions that are already been implemented, the special status or the decentralization bill with Chapter 4 uh, consecrated to the special status for the Northwest and Southwest regions tabled in Parliament after the adoption 
he has promulgated into law and he highlighted a number of uh, things like this w which he says are uh, intended to solve the problem in the northwest region we understand that southwest southwest. somebody is sick of diabetes and they have administered him malaria drugs and of course we have gone we've gone to a long way to be able to maybe bring in measures to me that i think that uh, measures that are not worth uh, solution seeking uh, we think that we understand with me that all these things that you have enumerated and the president enumerated babila these are not the root causes and these are not the panacea of the anglophone the solution to the anglophone problem talk about the special status which of course is an empty basket that we just received you know a basket that of course is like a marriage you know you're looking ahead and you're thinking that you're seeing something and when you're reaching there you realize that it is all an empty hole an empty pool of i mean a, a hole that you thought was a pool of water so there are a lot of issues an issue what, of bilingual do you think that is a bilingual we are going we are catching other issues as solutions to our anglophone problems which are not the solution was i mean our problem is not the problem of language our problem is not the problem of i mean the house of chiefs our problems are you not know, the problems are pointing i mean regional governors and whatsoever or what i mean our problem is fundamental and we are talking about the legacy the historical legacy which was supposed to be given to us in total and which of course we are asking for up to today we think that we are still joking with the lives of people and i want to make the president of the republic know maybe they are misguiding him i mean they are advising me wrongly let him know that he has decided to set a question in an examination and answer the question himself. That is not the question that was set for him. All right, Tabun Kal, uh, the president of the republic uh, indicated that uh, efforts have been made to solve the challenges that Cameroon is facing today, the security, the social, the economic challenges that the country is, is facing today. Do you think that uh, all what has been done now is not enough and not good enough to solve the problem like Dimancho, Michael? Uh, Babila Jonathan, I'm really very surprised. When I'm saying surprised because there are certain things in life that people shouldn't joke with when it comes to the life of people. I want to be very honest with that. We are sick and tired of cos cosmetic solutions. You will not imagine that we, Kamuna, the President of the Republic and I his government saying, providing cosmetic solutions. I am saying we are sick and tired of cosmetic solutions. I'm saying it. He is talking about election coming that will be coming up on the 9th of February. Are you sure that this will take place in my village in Besal, Libya, then? Division? He said all measures have been uh, taken. Are it measure be, or is the it, measures will be stepped up. Okay, the measure will be carrying the whole, the, all of those living in Libya, then, to chant to vote? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, is it must be, Libya, then, is not part of the Council of Cameroon. I am telling you, if he knows that he is the president of the United States, the president of Cameroon, let him go to Libya, then. It is my village, Besali. Let him go to Libya and then he can, when he comes back, he will tell me, why is it up to today they will be unable to install the senior divisional officer of Libya and why is it so? People should stop with cosmetic solutions. What we need here is not the empty special statute that was given to Anglophones. Can you give someone a special statute who has no power to legislate? Then he deliberates. And at the same time, let me give you an example, a simple example you should understand. As so far that special statute is concerned, you will not imagine that in that special statute, and we have a house of chiefs, and listen, we have representative. I don't know where he brought those type of words, and they say representative, I will be coordinated, called by somebody, by somebody from the government. The example is crystal clear. We have national assembly here in the Republic of Cameroon. And you, you ask the Prime Minister to be the President of the National Assembly. Is it the Executive not the House? The Executive not the House? The, the, the Parliament? I will tell them no. These are the cosmetic solution. The President of the Republic should take. He should be very careful. But the law says that the elected organs will uh, freely manage the affairs. Which type of elected uh, organs? Those Which type of elected organs will freely manage the affairs when there is someone that will coordinate the affairs, the affairs of them? They do not legislate. They do not. They deliberate on what? On the educational system or on the judicial system, is that what I'm going to I am telling you, before we realize, before the president of the republic realizes something, it will be too late for him. He started one. 
by giving out, saying that we yes, the greatest, the, the, the common law in Nam, in Nam, the 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 common law department, the common law department, the the common law bench at the Supreme Court, bilingualism, disarmament, non special statute. I am afraid that they will be talking about the Federal Republic of the Federal Republic. I'm the phone say we don't want the Federal Republic again. We don't want independent. But what I am saying, there is still time for him to come out with the federal system of government. That will be a way to a concrete solution as far as the problem in Cameroon is concerned. Right. For instance, take the economic situation of Cameroon. Look at how, what is happening in the southwest and northwest region of Cameroon. Do you think, in, maybe before the end of 2020, the impact of these two regions will be felt on the eight, on the eight region? And the, the impact economic is already, the impact is already no, been people, felt. People are not realizing it. Uh, declared as economic. I went, I went to the market. I went to the market. I wanted bananas. Mr. Babila Jonathan, three bananas, 200 francs. My ship is Kakatos. Ask myself, look at what we see in the mountain banana plant. Look at what we have. That we have the, before this war, we had it almost free. Do you want that this country? I do you know what, what, you know what, what happened. Syria. Ivory Coast and Libya should happen to Cameroon. And the head of state is the saying that for the head of state is there because we Cameroon. I do not know Cameroon asked him to be there. He, he said, said he, he won a election. He, he, he's saying that for us not to get to that level, for us not to get to what is happening in the Central African Republic, for example, for what happened in uh, Libya, for example, for us not to get there. Uh, those who are carrying guns and the, and the bushes should drop Babylon, their guns Babylon, and, and come out of Babylon, the bushes. Babylon, do you not get the me? only option will be to fight them. Do you not get me annoyed? This is the second time he's declared war, war around the phones. This is the second time. We all listen to that speech. This is the second time he's declared war around the phones. Do not get me annoyed. As a father, stop being arrogant. What is happening? Why can't you call for why can't you call for an inclusive dialogue? We need an inclusive dialogue. It was a major national no, dialogue. That one is a cosmetic dialogue. We want an inclusive dialogue. And, and the way Where the, the political parties who, who took part, the SDF, uh, the, the, the progressive movement and other parties uh, and so on. And the people who came from the diaspora to take part in that dialogue. I know you are the one asking questions, but there's a question I'm going to ask. Give me the meaning of an inclusive dialogue. Are you saying that that dialogue was not inclusive it enough? Give me the meaning in the dictionary of an inclusive dialogue. They are told whether that dialogue was that there was necessary or not, or whether it was an inclusive dialogue or not. That was a monologue. You will not define what people will say in a dialogue. Are you calling it a dialogue? Those people, the people who are supposed to be there, are not there. The separate way, the separate is there. All right. They're going to go cosmetic solution. What, 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 what they did, or what did they do in the presidential election? Where they brought on fake, fake international observers? No. We should be serious. All right, we are uh, crying for this uh, country, and I don't want to allow this country to, 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 to go rampage. All right, uh, Tabo, I'm coming to you in a short while. And Dimacho Michael, um, this is the second time that uh, a statement made by the President of the Republic is interpreted as a declaration of war. The first time was uh, when he just returned from the country from Ivory Coast, uh, when he said that all measures would be taken to solve the problem in the Northwest and Southwest regions, and that was interpreted as the declaration of war, an interpretation rejected by those who are close to him. And today, he, he said that uh, those who will persist on the wrong way, referring to those civilians who are carrying guns and they're in the bushes, uh, will be fought by the military, will be fought by the defense and security forces. Is that a declaration of war? Of what course. would be the impact of such a statement on the situation on the ground? The impact would be an aggravation of what has been going on for three years. You just cited it, this is the second time. When he said it the first time, people would. People, I mean, there was, uh, I mean, uh, anger flared. And you know what has happened since that time up to now? I would like to tell you that I'm not a prophet of doom. The anger that has flared two years ago is going to triple this time around. You know, uh, there is no need trying to flex Moses with people. Of course, uh, you know that you will not be able to get the immediate solution. Uh, the president has been trying to declare on the people and has been trying to fight the people and he has not been winning the war for three years now. And today, honestly, 
I felt like a civil society that the president was going to come out. The first thing that was going to come out of his mouth in his speech was to say that he's declaring a ceasefire. Those who know about war know what we mean by declaring a ceasefire from a leader that is the president of the republic. Because when you declare a ceasefire, everybody is supposed to drop down their guns. And of course, you know that humanitarian organization, the UN and whatsoever, they are supposed to get into those regions where people are suffering when a ceasefire has been declared. And they will be able to have a control penetration into the hinterland, into places where people need assistance. And of course, when you declare a ceasefire, anybody who shoots gun at that very moment is going in for the crime that you, uh, you committed. So the government, government is accusing some of those organizations of wanting to destabilize Cameroon by inflating figures of uh, IDPs, of persons in need of humanitarian aid, of debts and houses destroyed, villages destroyed, pens down and so on. I only see that this has gone a long way to be able to leak out the weakness of the government in terms of statistics of the Angofun war is concerned. This is a clear sign that the government doesn't know exactly what is happening in the northwest and the southwest region. No. It's because they do not have the clear statistics or either they are refusing to have the clear statistics and they want to give a different impression to the international community. These organizations who have given these statistics are organizations who are on the ground and they are giving holistic statistics about what is on the ground. And if the president should come to contradict himself, I think that he is just going a long way to be able to disgrace himself, to tell the international community that he doesn't have the, the, the country at hand, and he doesn't have the statistics of his country at hand. I, I think that we need to be very, very serious. One of the things that, I mean, angered me, I'll, you, permit me say this, in the speech was the fact that he talked about terrorists who are destabilizing the country and who are creating terrorism whatsoever. But I would like to say that, like a, a, a president who wanted to be objective, he, he would he, have admitted the two, the fact that the military are committing a lot of crimes. They have uh, so many people who are not able to get back to their uh, various villages in Norway and Southwest, not because of those boys who he calls terrorists, but because of the kind of the, 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 the actions of the military which, of course, is carrying people out of those regions. I think that we need to be very realistic. We have gone three years, and let us not go for one year more in this war. Enough is enough. We have born so much for so long a time. I think that it is time that somebody say that this should stop. Tabong Akal, the head of state, used those same words in his speech to the nation on the 31st of December 2018. He used those same words, terrorists and uh, rebels. Uh, and today is come back to this again after stiff criticisms coming from across the board politicians civil society actors who are um, uh, condemning the fact that government members are referring to those who are fighting for the independence of the former southern Cameroons for the restoration those who are fighting to divide Cameroon as terrorists and uh, rebels and so on uh, Mr. Vavila Jonathan uh, I'm telling you we are no more in the Precambia era we are no more in the Precambia era. Today, if you do something, maybe in BLM in my village, in BLM in my division, and Besale in my village, in less than some seconds or minutes, you have it in your smartphone. Therefore, means we are no more in the Precambia era. That's the difference. That is what the president is like. He doesn't know. He thinks that we are still in the Precambia era. No, we are no more in the Precambia era. And I'll tell you one thing. I have never seen a situation in life where you think anger or force will solve any problem. It has never solved a problem. War has never solved a problem. And nobody has ever won a war in life. Let us be realistic. America thought they won the war in Iraq. What but, is Iraq? But, but, the, but the activities of those, uh, the civilians who are carrying guns, is it not synonymous? Are those activities not synonymous um, to be, terrorism? Um, um, be, and the lie were, in those days, they were maquisars. Today, they are heroes because they were fighting for something good. Tomorrow, those same, terror, those same terrorists will be heroes. Because I am telling you, we are in a nation. And this nation is made up of the English and the French speaking regions. I have been saying, people should not mix up things. We were colonized by Britain, they were colonized by France. We all got independent in two different ways. Our independence was granted by the Britain, why just my friend? We are two different entities. 
That was before. That was before. Let us be before or now. The truth is that two different countries came together. Came together to form one. To which... No, listen. Two different countries came together at the Fuma Constitutional Conference. And a marriage was adopted. That marriage had no marriage certificate. No marriage certificate. And the President of the Republic should, take to, should know that. That we had no certificate. If he's wise enough, let him call for an inclusive dialogue. So we sign, we renew it, it just like concubines. We renew this marriage and sign a concrete marriage certificate that would live to last. You're referring to a union treaty. Is that? Do you know something? I am telling you, I'm still repeating. The moment they were one federation, we will not be ready to go one confederation. The moment they, were, they, were, they, 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 the moment they bring in confederation, so we're no more confederation, we're no one to separate. If let them keep bringing out cosmetic solutions, I am saying cosmetic solution. This cosmetic solution started since 2016. Till today, we are still on that cosmetic solution. Do you wonder my poor father, my, all my family in Besali, and the free marshal to destroy and military distress all my family, all my family, Mr. the president of the public knows that I, things are not moving? Mr. Babila Jonathan, I'm not taking other parts. The South is, I'm not taking other parts. Southern Cameroons is not Bamenda Buya. Nokumba, Southern Cameroon is made up of villages like Besali, like Kwakwa, like Nake, like Bole. Let him go to Bole or, or, or Kwakwa or Nake. Or let him get back to Bali. Or let him go to Batibo. That is Southern Cameroon. It's right. not Kumba. It's not Boya. It's not Bamenda. I am telling you. Do you know something? I was in Bamenda. People are more afraid of the military than even the terror, the, 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 the Ababo he calls terrorists today. People have no confidence on, on the military. And I'm telling you, this president of the republic should solve this problem before it goes out of hand. Before it goes out of hand, we are sick and tired of cosmetic solutions. Right, Look at the end of your speech of a father telling that I am going to destroy you, my sons. Why the people are crying? He said if they persist, persist on, way. on the wrong way. Is that the right way? Do you know what dialogue? Do you think today if you have a problem with your wife, you're going to hit hard on your wife? Would you dialogue with your wife come with a complete solution? All right, Tabonkal, thanks so much for uh, coming. You're going to uh, hand over your seat to uh, another uh, guest who is going to be joining us uh, to analyze the speech of the President of the Republic. No, thank, you. Mm. thank you very much, Anogo, without telling you my Temgua, Chamo de la Croix, Happy New Year 2020. Thank you very much, Mr. Babila Jonathan. Happy New Year to you as well. Happy New Year was my pleasure. Dimantu, uh, Michael, when you uh, look at... Um, what the president of the republic said about the situation on the ground because some people have been saying that the situation is improving uh we are gradually moving towards a return to normalcy and peace in those two regions but a head of state in his address to the nation today said criminal activities of armed groups continue disrupting activities in those two regions and of course and this is exactly what i was trying to say Babylon. i was saying that uh, people say life is turning back to normal. Remember, I opened my speech by saying I listened to the president talk about the issue of progress about three times. And I was waiting to hear him describe or analyze or be able to expatiate on what he means by progress. Because you realize that life in the northwest and southwest region goes on, I mean, 30% in the main towns. When you go to the southwest region, you, visit, you may visit Buya, you may visit Limbe. You go to the northwest region, you may visit Baminda only. But what becomes of these other villages, which of course harbor our citizens? Let me tell you that life is at a standstill. Secondly, what has become of our education, of our children who are supposed to go to school? When the president talks about uh, progress, I was listening to hear him say, like somebody who thinks about the future of Cameroonians. Because I have an impression that most of these people who are living now, like the president and all the government, they are living as if life is going to end with them. But, but we are thinking about continuity in this country. And when we're thinking about continuity, we are thinking about education. Look at our, our, our villages around the, 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 the regions there. there is, the school is not going on. Children have become delinquent. Most of them are finding it much more comfortable joining the guy, the people in the bushes, rather than coming over to town. And the issue is, you find the population is running to those people who are getting into the bushes. 
So where are they finding comfort? The population is finding comfort with the people he calls terrorists. If to me, he shouldn't have called them terrorists. You should have called them those who through voluntary means are harboring internally displaced people because most of these population in the villages are running to these people he calls terrorists. So when you look at the issue of transportation, you see it is at a standstill. You cannot penetrate. I mean even humanitarian uh, organizations are not able to get to these people, to women who need help, to children who need help, and to these displaced people, to the sick people, they are not able to get to them. You, you have heard about the deaths of even uh, international organization uh, civil members who are being killed on a daily basis because of lack of security. And if the president should say, to talk about uh, progress, I begin to ask myself. I think that we should be able to look ourselves in the eyes, look himself, the president is particularly should look himself in the mirror and be able to ask himself if for three years, he has two Cameroonians the truth. I, I think that you able to make an assessment of himself. Like he, he only interested about garnishing Cameroonians with what he thinks that is the best thing to do. He has failed to talk about the failures of the government in terms of infrastructure. We'll we be are coming to, back to uh, that. You see, some of these issues, I mean, the things that go around come around. And I think that these are all ramifications of the uh, uh, Angofon crisis. We'll be coming back to that in a short while. We are receiving Walang Richard, another member of the civil, uh, Abang. Uh, Abang, another member of the civil society. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Babila Jonathan. It's always a pleasure for me to be here. I'm excited that you know <coughs> you have invited me to comment on the speech of the head of state, uh, which has not left many Cameroonians indifferent, as I think, you know, based on what he has said. So thank you for inviting me. All right. We were talking about the situation in the northwest and southwest regions uh, of the country. What's your take on what the President of the Republic said with regard to efforts of government to solve the problem, with regard to efforts of the government to restore normalcy and peace in those two regions? I, I think that, you know, there are certain uh, things that the President of the Republic has said which are virtually, which are basically true. Number one, he says that the problem of insecurity is still there. And he says that uh, some of those guys who have become armed bandits are terrorizing the population of the Northwest and Southwest regions. Let us, look at our, let us look at ourselves in the eyes and ascertain whether this is true or not. I think it is true. You know, there is insecurity in the Northwest and in the Southwest. But I think that, you know, um, a, a, a panelist has made mention of the fact that it is not only those guys, you know, the Amber Boys, who are terrorizing citizens or inhabitants of the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, even the military. In fact, uh, I watched uh, an interview you gave uh, uh, to the Cardinal Tumi, where he says that, and it is very technical, it is good that the government be aware of this fact. He says that many of those guys have started coming out of the bushes, not because they are afraid of the military. He, this, this was not his word, but he says they are coming out of the bushes because they are hungry. They don't have what to live on again. It means that if there was a means for these guys to stay in the bush, they would have stayed in the bush. It is not the fear of the military, by implication, from what the Kanda is saying, because he has had to, I, I watched the interview very well. He has met with these guys Many of them he has discussed with them, tried to destroy them.